Welcome to day two of the 25 days of Copilots. Today we're going to talk about optimizing the browser based Copilot. So, we're going to learn a lot about the value of what used to be called Bing Chat for Enterprise and how that is a superior option for you as you plan to work and get the benefit of the power of GPT. Here I have a screenshot on my screen here of the two experiences. So there is Bing Chat all by itself. So you just go to bing.com and click on chat in the top area of the screen. So I'll just turn on my laser pointer and point this out. So from bing.com you'll always have chat in the top. Now on this left side I am anonymous. I have not signed in in any way. Um, on the other hand, on the other side of the screen, I have logged in with my Microsoft credentials and you will see that I automatically get this protected flag. And this means that I have uh, Copilot or Bing Chat for Enterprise as part of my work licensing, right? And because of that, I get this extra layer of protection. Now, I always suggest to everyone, no matter what you're doing, always take a look at the terms and the privacy statements. But where these two differ is primarily in the privacy statement. Okay, and you'll notice this called out on the bottom here. Let's see if I can zoom in to this area here. And you'll see down here it says, your personal and company data are protected in this chat. So it's not like if I was on ChatGPT or even in Bing Chat where the privacy is slightly different, right? Um, I am ensured that anything I type as a prompt will not be available to Microsoft, to the internet, or to anyone else basically it is protected in the cloud just as other things are okay so this is the key reason why people want to leverage the enterprise version of this copilot so that you get this extra layer of protection now if you're just writing a poem for your spouse you know then you can use ChatGP or Bing chat without credentials but if you're ever typing prompts that may include customer information or may include even confidential products in your company, then you want to make sure you're, you're using um, Bing Chat for Enterprise, now called Copilot, um, and that you're signed in. And how you know that you're in the right place is you have this protected flag. Um, and this is offered to Microsoft 365 um, uh, subscribers. Okay, let's look at some solid examples of how Bing Chat for Enterprise, now renamed Copilot, you'll see it changed very soon um, as far as the naming goes. But let's say I want to get Copilot to help me with this kind of really long I, uh, article to kind of get to the essentials. And in the panel, I'm just going to say, what are the top five foods that are considered to be highest in pesticides. So that's really what the dirty dozen is about. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I say according to this page, right? Because it will default to doing an internet search unless I say in this page or uh, according, uh, according to this page or within this page or this document. So this page, this document helps the copilot know that I'm talking about what's over here, right? And so um, I've asked for the top five foods that are considered to be high in pesticides. This is going to help me put together my shopping list of things that need to be organic, okay? So then it starts pulling those out and um, this will be a little bit of a time saver for me because I got the first, 
I don't have to read through this article or scan through this article. Um, I got the top five. And so if I'm going to buy any of these things, uh, they'll, I'll tell my, my person who's doing the groceries, please, um, please make sure they're organic. Okay. So that's one thing you can do. You can, you can pull out action items. You can pull out key bullet points so you can ask questions or query about a page. Now, when it comes to Excel, you can also do queries, but here's the challenge, right? So I have this table and all I did was get, uh, open up a, a Excel online. So basically I just went to my app launcher, found Excel, opened up a, a template. There was a template um, called online sales tracker. And if I just opened it up exactly the way it was, I didn't make any changes. If I wanted to save this, you know, I kind of, I would save it, but you would assume that this is real work. In this case, it's just the template. Okay. And there's a table here with items listed on the left. So I think this question could work, right? Now, I actually know that question works really well if you were using Excel's Copilot. Each of the Office applications have their own uh, co-pilots, which are skilled for that application. And they are amazing to use. But not everybody has those co-pilots. They are an additional license. So uh, could you use this kind of um, simpler approach for getting some of those things done? Yes, you can, but you'll often run into, when it comes to Office documents, not PDFs, but specifically Office documents, this, sorry, I can't access your web page at the moment. Now I ran into a hack, which I can't remember where I got it from, but um, this particular hack can do simple tables. So basically this table is fairly small. So what I did, was I took a picture of it. So I just used the snippet tool and saved a picture of this table range to my desktop. Because um, Copilot can analyze a picture, now I can try the same question. So I'm just gonna copy. See, so everything that you get in this panel has a little copy on the top. So I can copy that, paste this here, Analyze the, it's changing it slightly, the table in this image, okay? And now I'm going to upload that image from my desktop. There's a screenshot. And uh, you'll see that there's a difference. Now it does let you know right away that because of privacy, any human faces that it may pick up in the image will be blurred. Um, and that's just part of privacy. So no problem. We're just gonna, we don't have any pictures in here anyway. We're gonna just wait a minute and see what it comes up with. Now in this case, notice it comes up with more insights than it did before. Okay, way more insights. It starts to look at the different items in the table. It looks at trends in the table. It looks up things like that. And this came up recently with one of my peers, Rastica, who had a customer that wanted to do this, um, who didn't have the Excel Copilot. So um, this is a little bit of a hack, but it won't work if your table is too big to fit into a picture. Um, and so, you know, it's not really intended to be the way that you do this, but it's a cute little hack that I found. All right, let's talk about composing text. So I've opened up a Word document here, and uh, I don't know if you'll notice that we have chat and compose. So any type of text-centric application can be opened here, doesn't matter. If you can insert text into it, then you can use this compose tab to create text for it, okay? So this could be an email in Outlook Online, this could be a document, this could be a PowerPoint, as long as I've clicked somewhere in there. Um, let's just do a quick write about. Okay, so let's just draw, let's do something fun. 
Let's describe the craziest invention you can think of that would make life easier or more fun. Okay, I want to make this kind of casual. It's kind of crazy casual. It could have, could make it funny as well. So you have these tones, and you can add additional tones. Um, I'm going to pick casual. You can pick a format. Do you want it in paragraph, bullet points, LinkedIn, post, summary, or report? And I'll just put summary. And then you can pick your length. So these parameters kind of save you a little bit of time in prompting so that you get kind of closer to what you want and there's less trial and error. So I'm going to generate a draft and it comes up with something. <laughs> Come up with a device that can read your mind. So once you have that thing ready, you can either regenerate to get another invention, like maybe you don't like this one, or what you can just do is add some additional uh, details, which will help you think of some additional details. But I'm just going to click the copy button and I can put that anywhere. Or if I want to put it right here in the browser and not bother with copy and paste, I can just click where I want it to go and hit add to site. So in this case, site represents the page that's open in the tab. Sometimes I prefer to use chat and that's because chat actually has more, um, we'll try it in both, right? I'm going to try to write a detailed, no, I'm going to say write a short blog outline with H2, H3, subheadings, and bullet points. Well, I am asking for a lot, so this is kind of detailed. About the 30 dozen foods. Okay, so we're going to stay in the same topic here. But I'm just going to change this to detail because I'm asking for quite a bit of formatting here. And this is something you can do so you don't have to format it after. You can add your own formatting specifications in your prompt. So um, we will let that take a minute. It might take a minute to run. Um, so anytime you want to write a blog outline and you add this exact prompt, the only thing you'll change is about the. So at the end of yours, you might have about the something else. So you can use this prompt exactly as is to get this kind of uh, really neat looking format as well. I could have said maximum word count 200 or something like that. Um, but I actually wanted you to see how the document looks. So in this case, you do not have the add to site. So you can click copy and then just control V to paste it into your word file and you'll have a better looking document. It will underline all hyperlinks for you so you can see that, you know, what, what's hyperlinked and it'll even include uh, footnotes for you. So that you that are clickable that you can go to. And what I just kind of remember to do is remove the the answer that they gave before answering the question. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I can do that for you. You just take that out. Now, the last thing I will do is I might, so sometimes it will do this, which you see here, the H2 colon, H1 colon. You can just search and replace them out. Sometimes it doesn't do it. I can't really tell you what the difference is of when it does and when it doesn't, but you can just search and replace them out. So replace uh, H uh, asterisk colon uh, with nothing um, and so that'll remove um, all of them okay so let's add a picture to give this document a little bit of flair um, so I'm just gonna put a return at the top. but I'm going to now add a picture on the top here so I'm gonna say create uh, a photo real well let's do a 
Let's do a watercolor. Let's do a watercolor painting of various fruits in a bowl. Very, I'll just do various fruits with bright colors and low light. Okay, so now we're asking it to create an image, which chat can do. I don't believe Compose does this, but uh, this is kind of why I use chat more than I use Compose, because it's not hard for me to copy and paste. But I do like that Compose gives you that, you know, ability to select tone, select style. It kind of does save some time in your prompting. Um, so it's going to attempt to use DALI to create an image. This is just a placeholder that it will put there and the placeholders, they change every now and then. But as long as you see this bar spinning, that means it's still working on the image. Um, when you see four images, you know that you've got um, it's finished, right? And you click on them and you can browse through them. Now, once you see one you like, you just right click and save the image. And you just, and I do have one on my desktop, but I'm just going to say fruit, F R U I T. I'll just say fruits. That'll help me remember the difference, right? Then you can go back to your document and insert that image. Now, this could be PowerPoint that I'm inserting the image into. It could be uh, Excel. It could be any, do any document that allows me to insert photos. I can center that photo. I can also do a little bit of formatting depending on the application I've inserted it into. Like for instance, pictures and words can have round formats, right? And uh, I can change the format of the pictures in Word just by using the ribbon. So depending on what application you have, you'll have a, a variety of, of choices of what you can do. So I really love this. I want you to know that when it comes to images for PowerPoint, this is phenomenal. And I really love trying it out. What I'm gonna include in the description for you is a whole bunch of tips on image style from an article that is amazing that kind of helps you use prompts to make your images more interesting. Uh, you can even make images in the style of artists that are popular that you respect. Um, it will never duplicate an artist's design exactly because they're copyrighted, but it will, it will give you the style of so you can like do, for instance, let's take this same prompt, copy, and I'm going to paste this, and I'm just going to change this to pencil sketch um, in the style of a children's storybook. So you see that I'm adding a different format and a different style. Let's see what happens now. And this would be, there'll be some tips in the description about this because I know people are gonna really enjoy using this. Again, if you have Copilot for PowerPoint, this has kicked up several notches in the skills of that Copilot. But for those of you that don't have the Copilot for Office, this is another way you can generate very beautiful um, artwork and pictures for your documentation. Look at this. So you see how to kind of like a whole different feel to this, uh, a little bit lighter. You can see the pencil strokes in these. Uh, you probably can't because it's probably not as clear for you as it is for me, but you can tell this is a pencil sketch and it looks more like something you might see in a storybook. What are the most common questions asked about self-driving cars. We're changing the subject a little here. But again, you can use this prompt about anything, right? So just use the beginning and then whatever you want to get the most common questions about, you type it afterwards and then you'll get a list of commonly asked questions. 
Now I am going to copy this and I'll tell you why as soon as that finishes. It is searching for the most commonly asked questions about self-driving cars and it will return back a list of the most commonly asked questions. We'll just give it a, a minute to do that. And then after it's done that, what you will notice is that the questions are there so that you can see them, but they aren't answered. So if you want to kick this prompt up a notch, you can do it again, but this time say, please include answers to the questions and just hit period, right? So it's still doing these questions. So it actually gave me the top questions and then it gave me some sites where I could see uh, someone else's draft of the key questions, right? But if I just want the questions and an answer, I can just do this and now it will give me the questions and an answer. This is also great for if you want to write a plan, any type of outline that you might want to write. You could do uh, write a 30, 60, 90 day plan for a new employee joining uh, an automobile manufacturing company or something, right? Give me a list of interview questions that I can ask for our new Power Apps developer, right? Maybe you're interviewing for a Power Apps developer. You have no idea what they're supposed to know. You could ask that, get some human in the loop to review that, and then use that as your interview guide as you interview new um, Power Apps employees. Um, candidates, right? Um, you could also put together a quiz, right? So you can see the difference with what it's gen generating here. It's even given us some technical versus ethical answers, right? There's, there's technical and ethical questions. And of course, if I want to get this into my Word document, um, as soon as it gets done, I will have that copy link. You could do a little trivia game. Let's play Power Apps Trivia. So you can do quizzes or you can do trivia. Because I say let's play, we're actually playing together in the browser with the co-pilot. So let's see what it comes up with. It's going to ask me some questions. Okay. Yep. I'm ready, so I'm going to type start quiz. Okay, here we go. It's going to ask me five questions about power ups, and I have to choose the correct answer from the options given. I can type the letter or the full answer. If you don't know, you can type I don't know, or you can type skip. Okay? Question one. What's the name of the web-based tool that lets you create and edit Canvas apps and Power Apps? Power Apps Studio, Power Apps Maker, Power Apps Designer, Power Apps Builder. They're trying to tricky, aren't they? Because I know there's a maker portal. I'm going to say Power Apps Studio. Let's see if I'm right. That is correct. Okay. About time I get one of these, right? So it will ask me question two. So it's kind of fun to do quizzes with the um, co-pilot and you can copy those quizzes, take them into a document and use them in your, in your web applications. I mean, your webinars or your applications and things like that. So I really like doing that. Was there anything else that I wanted to share? I think about, I think I exhausted my brain there. Um, you can also do people styles. I don't know if that makes, okay. Write a short excuse for why I need to miss a meeting. Now here I'm going to say in the style of Snoop Dogg, okay. 
So basically, you can actually use styles just similar to the way you use tones. Um, okay, I'm sorry, but I can't make it to the meeting today. I got some business to handle with my homies. What does it say? Okay, I got to go back up. You know how it is. Ain't nothing personal, just some G thing. I'll catch up with you later. <coughs> For series of peace out. Now, I, I can't imitate Snoop Dogg, but you can actually see that this paragraph does kind of help you think of Snoop Dogg a little bit. So you can do that kind of thing as well. You can write in the style. You can write for the understanding of a style. Um, and I could talk about this for a long time. And we, we're supposed to have short videos. Um, explain quantum physics. Okay, somebody don't know how to spell for a child of 10 years of age in under 100 no let's do under 50 words okay Quantum physics is the science of very tiny things like atoms and light. It tells us how to behave and interact with each other. Sometimes they act like waves and sometimes they act like particles. Quantum physics helps us understand many things in nature and technology. So very, very helpful tool. You can put stuff into your documents. You can summarize pages. You can analyze images. You can create images super duper useful tool and the fact that you are protected in an enterprise version means that your all of your prompts stays protected so try it out let me know how you're doing with this and i'll see you tomorrow at day three where we'll actually get into a little bit more specifics for power apps firstly talk to you then happy holidays